How do you develop your own photography style? And why is it that some people say that it's so important to develop your own photography style, but don't really show you how to? <laughs> Well, today I'm gonna to unravel this mystery and give you some practical tips to get your photography moving in the right direction, as well as sharing one thing that I think might have held me back from developing my own style. First of all, let's have a look to see what style is exactly by using Google. So Google, what is style in photography? In photography, style generally refers to the way in which a photographer approaches their subject matter and creates their images. Now that doesn't really answer the question. So let's try something else. Let's do what all the cool kids do and use chat GPT to find my password. There we go. So again, what is style in photography? In photography, style refers to the unique visual approach or aesthetic that a photographer employs. A photographer's style work. is often shaped by their personal preferences. Developing a distinctive style is an important aspect of photography. Okay, so that's just a little bit too wordy for me, but there are a few things that we can take from that. The idea of how you approach your subject and also how you distinguish yourself from others, these are two really important things. So if you take photos like everyone else, you'll get the same as everyone else. So if we look at this mountain, it looks nice. However, there are thousands of photos exactly like this. But how about this? It's exactly the same location, but has something about it. This is where that style comes from. It's looking at a scene and trying to see it in an interesting and different way to the norm. As you develop it, your style will give a certain look to your photographs and draw the viewer in from the simplest reaction of, hmm, that looks nice, to, wow, that's amazing. It makes the viewer feel something, but it still sounds a little bit vague, doesn't it? So I've got five things and they all seem to work together to help develop your photography. First of all, look at the work that you really love and ask yourself why you really like it. What stands out and what draws you to it? The Tetons and Snake River is a famous shot by Ansel Adams. It's just a classic leading line into a grand landscape with some epic clouds above it. To me, this epitomizes landscape photography. You have a river, a mountain range, and some weather, and they all work together. This next one is from Galen Rowell. The light is coming in from the side on the Machu Pachare peak, and Galen lines this up with a tree in the foreground. And I really like squashing things together like this, and this is what drew me to this image. I do this a lot with long lenses, and this is why I love a good telephoto lens over a wide angle lens any day of the week. This third shot is from Kyle Volers. Sorry, Kyle, if I pronounced your surname wrong. Kyle is a South African photographer and the shapes in this desert are mesmerizing. They lead your eye into the frame and the contrast in the shot between those shadows and where the sun is hitting those sand dunes just makes this shot look epic. So again, some great side light within a unique landscape feature. Now I've only shown you three examples for the sake of keeping this video short, but the more that you look at, the more you'll start to see trends of things that you're drawn to. Style's not something that you can develop overnight. And also, it's not something that you can show off in one photograph. Instead, it's something that you develop over time. It can change over time, but it generally comes across in a body of work or a group of photographs. Now, style can relate to absolutely anything from a certain color palette to a certain subject or a certain genre. But when you look at a person's body of work, you'll start to see that style the more photographs you see from that person. Next, I want you to look at your own work, well, at least the ones that you like, and then ask yourself what you like about them. What stands out? What makes them unique? But also what you don't like about them. In this panorama I took of Camorthen slate mine, I like the mix of industry with the raw landscape, how it's creeping in but not taking over, and how the two fit together so well. With this one, I like the simplicity of it, the pastel colors, and then that one hill sticking out of the fog. With this next one, I like the difference in the layers between the tranquil hut next to the lake with the towering mountains of the Dolomites in the background. Now I'd love to shoot this one in different lighting conditions and also different seasons. Now, once you've looked at all of these photographs, you might see differences and similarities between other people's work and your work. And this might show what's missing from your photography, and it also might show you that you're on the right path. Are the locations very similar or very different to your favorites? Is it the light or is it something completely different? The aim is not to copy those photographs from your favorites exactly, but to take different elements that you like from different photographers and make them into something of your own. Now, before we get on to the third point, is there something that has helped you develop your photography style? If so, let me know in the comments below. 
it'll be great to pull a lot of this information from lots of different people because I'm absolutely fascinated by this subject. Now, when you first look at someone's work, you might not see their style in just one of their photographs, but you will see it in a group of their work. But then the next time you see one of their photographs, you will see that style. So with this in mind, just go out and photograph things as much as possible and from as many different angles as you can imagine. This is by far the best way to get to know your camera, get to know how it works and get to know what you like to shoot. After all, if you haven't photographed something, how do you know if you don't like that genre of photography? I've photographed people, animals, sports, buildings, big things, small things, the stars and landscapes, and I know I much prefer photographing landscapes over people. However, this is probably my shyness coming through. I just get that imposter syndrome when I'm first starting out on a portrait shoot. So when you're out in the world, look at it objectively what stands out to you and what interests you. Ansel Adams once said, if it excites me, there's a good chance it'll make a good photograph. Now, what excites me are bits of light hitting a landscape where there is patchy cloud and that dappled light, even in the middle of the day. This gives texture and detail more than just a well-lit scene or one of those golden sunrises. And I suppose that's a little bit of my style coming through. Now, if this all makes sense, but you're still unsure as to how you can develop your photography style, try setting yourself a project. It can be any kind of project. It might be the 10 biggest mountains in your country. It could be boat houses. It could be phone boxes, or maybe you've got a favorite location you keep going back to. Try photographing it in different seasons or in different weather conditions. In having this in mind, it'll give your photography purpose and it'll really help with your motivation instead of just going out there and photographing things for the sake of it. Also, if it's a project that's ongoing over a series of years, you'll actually see your photography develop through that set of images. It will take time, but this is all part of the process. One of my friends is a tennis coach and he once said to me, if you only serve the ball every now and then, you won't know the difference between a good serve and a bad one. Whereas if you hit thousands and thousands of serves, you'll start to understand what works and what doesn't. And this is the same for photography. If you only take a few pictures every now and then, you won't understand the process and you won't understand what goes into getting a good photograph. But if you take thousands and thousands of photographs, you'll start to get a deeper understanding of photography, and this in turn will help you develop your own photographic style. Now, the one thing that has held me back is photographing what I think others think is a good photograph, instead of just photographing what I like. I did this for a long time when I was first learning photography, and even though I got some photographs that were nice, I didn't really get anything from them and a lot of them were carbon copies of other people's work. Whereas when I started to forget what others thought, I started producing work that I really liked, as well as having a better understanding of what goes into a good photograph. And I think this is the main thing. If you're producing photos that you like, that you'd be proud to hang on your wall, who cares what anyone else thinks? Now, if you struggle to get your photographs in focus, in this video, I show you exactly how I do it to get way more keepers than I used to. And it's surprisingly straightforward once you understand the process. I'll see you next time.